What's going on Jets fans? Happy Canada Day and welcome back to another video here on Peg City Hockey. I'm currently not home right now. We've got a makeshift little studio going on. The jerseys flipping around in the wind, but that doesn't matter because it's free agency frenzy and the Jets have actually went out and made four pretty interesting signings. Starting off with Jeffrey Veal and Colin Dillia. Both of those guys making league minimum uh, a forward in Jeffrey Veal and a goaltender in Colin Dillia. I saw a lot of Colin Dillia this year with the Vancouver Canucks. Not very impressed by him at all. So not really looking forward to understanding that contract and seeing how it plays out. Hopefully it's just a moose thing. And Jeffrey Veal is actually kind of like fighting depth forward that is an NHL guy that hasn't spent a lot of time in the NHL and found big success. But nonetheless, still an interesting uh, signing because I feel like that's a grit signing for call-ups for certain matchups. Obviously, you see the addition of Ryan Reeves to the Toronto Maple Leafs. So maybe the Jets are trying to get tight, uh, tougher and get some actual fighting grit to potentially call up for certain matchups. And I'm okay with that. Always been okay with a goon call-up for certain matchups from time to time. And then there were two signings that the Jets made that are pretty interesting. One of them, I'm not gonna lie, is pretty standard this time of year, a backup goaltending signing. Well, we went out and we got a guy that we're all pretty much familiar with at this point, and that is Lauren Bossois. He has returned to Winnipeg on a $1.75 million contract, and I'm really happy with it. I think Lauren Bossois proved in the playoffs this year that he's a valuable goaltender that can play as a starter when depended upon. Um, it's a cheap contract. Uh, he's familiar with the system. He's friends with Hellebuck. So I think it's a good signing. I think if you're looking for a goaltender that, you know, is a placeholder for right now, Lauren Brassois is a good one, and I'm okay with it, especially the, uh, with the cap value. He's very cheap. We're familiar with his game. We know how he plays. And not only is it kind of ironic that he came back after the Euro backup chance in the playoffs this year, but I think it says a lot to his character and about his time in Winnipeg. So he's probably happy to be coming back, and I'm happy that he's back. I think it's a fair contract, and I like this one by Chevy. I think it makes a lot of sense. Compared to those other two contracts, they're definitely moose air, uh, call ups calls for, for the most part. League men don't really see them getting a lot of opportunity. Obviously, you see the fact that you let Kevin Stenland walk today, so you lose a guy there. You've lost already a couple depth guys on the moose as well. So I understand what the Jets are doing here and what Chevy's plan is, but overall, it just. I don't know. I, I really don't know, guys. I think it makes a lot of sense to go out and sign depth when you need it, but at the exact same time, are these guys really the best options for those positions? You know, like Chris Dillia, 29 years old, a save percentage below 900 in the NHL is not acceptable, and that's who you're bringing in. So I don't know if even that's a good option for the Moose with the way things have been going down there. Obviously, you lose Mikel Burden. He walks. He's not on the team anymore. So that's a big loss to your goaltending prospects. That's why they've been taking more as of late. But you have Dom DiVincenzi. You have Thomas Mellick, who you just drafted, who, are, who definitely are going to be a couple of years away. But... Again, I, I'm not a big fan of that one. This Lauren Bossois contract, I really like. I think it makes a lot of sense for the Jets right now, for the way that the season's going with the players they've already gotten with the, tra uh, the trade with Pierre Dubois and the Kings. So I, I like that one. And then the final contract is re-signing Vlad Domestikov to a two-year, $2 million contract. And I love this move. I know a lot of people were on the edge about signing Domestikov. I know they're like, oh, we don't need him. It's a rebuild situation, blah, 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 blah. I understand that. I really do. But I think he fit in perfectly. His stats say that. I think he likes bonus. I think he likes his system. I think he likes the city. And he was a really, really good fit up and down the lineup uh, in a really crunch time for the Jets last year after the trade deadline. He was a very important part of them actually making the playoffs. And I think he'll be a really good fit down there in the bottom six. He played well with Adam Lowry. And Adam Lowry has been looking for some stable connection down there on that third line or fourth line, depending on where you use him for a while since the cop trade. I think this makes a lot of sense. I, I, I really like this signing. I think it's a two-year window that makes sense because he'll be a trade deadline asset for you in two years. Um, I think it makes a lot of sense from the standpoint of the value. $2 million is fair for a good depth forward like that who can play on your third line, who can play on your second line because of injuries at time. You can use him on your penalty kill. You can even arguably put him on the second power play at times if you're in a pinch with injuries and that's what the Jets need. You have to remember that even though you know these guys may not be the best skilled players available, they're going to provide value in the areas that they're good at and that's the type of team that the Jets are building this year you know they're building a team similar to the Kraken this year similar to Vegas even in their first year they're finding ways to get players that are good at individual things and building a good cohesive team potentially off of that with the influx of prospects coming into the system guys already on the team and Kyle Connor Josh Morrissey Nikolai Ehlers and Mark Scheifele still around that influx of talent 
with these new players. They're going to bring in a new ideology with the guys that are already here and the skill that's already on this team is what this retool is about. And I'm okay with that. I've always been okay with the idea of retooling with the potential of being good quickly and using the prospects that we've already drafted. And we haven't traded any of them. It's looking like we're going to be using them this year with the way that Tev Chevy is talking. And I'm excited about that. And at this point, I have no expectations for the Jets. That era of competition and competing for a number one spot is pretty much over. So at the end of the day, this is all you can really ask for. So I like these moves. I think they make a lot of sense for a day one situation where I didn't really see the Jets going out and doing anything. I actually ended up liking a lot of the stuff that they did. Those two minor league signings, again, it's really tomato tomato. You know what I mean? Like they're they're good for the moose in the ahl could there have been better options for that category probably but what the jets like to do is find value in guys that other teams don't usually see it's worked sometimes in the past so i'm not going to judge them too quickly now let's see how they actually fit but i'm not a fan of the colin dillian move i'm just going to say that now and i think a lot of people are in agreement with me that so let me know your thoughts down in the comment section below, guys, how you're feeling about day one of free agency. Lots of work to still be done. The Pierre-Luc Dubois move is complete. The Blake Wheeler buyout is complete. You re-sign a backup goaltender. You keep Nemestikov. You know, now it's really moving down to Chevy. It's moving down to Mark Shifley, and it's figuring out what potentially might be next for this club and the defense going into the rest of this offseason. So stay tuned for more content about the Winnipeg Jets, as you always know. Peace and positivity as always. Check out my, my Twitter and all the other links down in the description below. Uh, see you guys in the next one. Happy Canada Day, like I said. Go Jets, go, and bye-bye.